Hey everybody, welcome back to another D and D Beyond Dev Update. Uh, I'm Joe Starr. I am in charge of making videos about elves and magic here at D and D Beyond. Uh, if you are joining us for the first time, what is this? Uh, this is our weekly Dev Update. Uh, D and D Beyond is the uh, is the greatest tool set in the world that uh, makes the greatest role playing game of all time. Super easy to play, and uh, this is our weekly check in to just let you know, hey, here's what's coming up uh, with the tool set, and also our opportunity to connect you. Uh, with our devs for a little Q and A to go a little go a little deeper, get a little context. Welcome, glad you're here. Um, here's how the show works: first ten minutes or so is me going through the roadmap. Uh, latter half of the show is a Q and A with one of our devs. Today we have on Pat uh, Pat Bachman. Sorry, Pat. Um, uh, Pat, 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 Pat uh, we have Pat on today. Uh, he's going to be talking to you guys a little bit about our generic feature system. Uh, which I'm super excited to have him on for. Uh, we've got links dropping into uh, into chat from our mods. If you're watching on Twitch, if you're in the future on YouTube, we've got links below down in the description. Um, if you want to go check out our change log on the website to just sort of see like, oh, hey, here's literally like a list of everything that's been updated recently. You can go check out our change log uh, super easily. But for now, let's jump you directly into our roadmap. Oh, also, sorry. Yeah, if you're in Twitch, um, uh, uh, type question for your question. The mods will catch it. We don't have the boss fight running today. Sorry, a little technical difficulties on our end with that. Uh, hopefully, we'll have that smoothed out by next week. Be kind to your mods, checking your questions, and they're running our giveaways. All right, let's jump into the roadmap now. Uh, a little art, by the way, from our uh, our uh, current actual play live stream of Unwelcome Spirits. Super excited about that. A um, little bit of business, first of all. We've got two books available for pre-order. Critical Role, Call of the Netherdeep, which of course is Critical Role's first adventure book from Wizards of the Coast. Lots of really fun stuff in here. Um, uh, if, if you like deep sea beasties and weirdness as much as I do, um, if, uh, if you walked out of the movie Aquaman, and liked everything that you saw, including the squid, the, the octopus that played drums. I think you'll like this book, even if you know you're not a fan of uh, the, the critical role setting. Not a crime. Uh, I think there's some cool stuff in here for you. And then, of course, Monsters of the Multiverse available for pre-order right now too. Uh, both of those are going to have uh, pre-order perks that we will be releasing and uh, and teasing a little closer to launch for both of those books. Uh, I know still a lot of questions around Monsters of the Multiverse. I apologize for your wait. We currently have a frequently asked questions that we're um, ironing out with Wizards of the Coast about how the book will adapt into D&D Beyond. Um, they are putting eyes on that right now. As soon as it is back in our hands, we'll be sharing it with you. Cointainers, available for all users. Speaking of Pat, Pat, very proud of this pun. Um, containers uh, were sub only for a couple weeks while we worked out the bugs. They are now available to all users, all registered users at D and D Beyond uh, can now put their coins into stuff. We are super stoked about that. Speaking of available for all users, rollable monster stat blocks on encounters are now available for all users, uh, which is super cool. This is probably one of my favorite features on D and D Beyond um, is to be able to roll directly on a monster stat block in the combat tracker of encounter. So super stoked about that. Go set up an encounter and uh, roll some dice on that monster stat. I'm super excited about it. Say, so, and speaking of containers, horses, they're containers now. Um, so we, uh, we announced last week um, that we we're gonna start doing a monthly AMA on our forms, which is also linked uh, below if you are watching in the future on YouTube, you know, just a nice little 48 hour uh, and just direct chit chat with uh, with one of our uh, with one of our dev team members. Um, uh, so that launched uh, this week. Uh, our own faith who you met uh, last week uh, did our first one. It went really well. Super fun. Make sure you participate in the next one. Something interesting that happened was someone was said, hey, you know, um, I have a draft horse. I want to be able to like load the draft horse up with uh, with inventory. I'm not able to do that, um, and uh, and uh, our dev team said, "Yeah, that, that that's a that's a really good call." Uh, flipped a switch, and uh, hey, your mounts are containers now. There you go. You never know what's going to happen uh, when you hang out on our forums with the devs. So make sure you do so for the next one. And catch that next AMA. Super worth your time. Okay, we got a little actual play. Uh, yeah, I just want to show it off. I'm excited about it. a little actual play of Unwelcome Spirits running right here on our Twitch. Episode one was last night. Our own Amy Dallin DMing along with our editor in chief, Michael Galvis. 
and uh, some really cool special guests. Our friend Emma Fife, and of course, uh, Mark from High Rollers and Elisa Pearl uh, joining us for that as well. So check it out. Super fun. First episode was great. Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master Guide updates. Um, not really updates, sorry. Refreshes, as Faith called them. Uh, this is a project to make the earlier books uh, released on D&D Beyond really kind of like up to code with our current standards. Um, uh, we've come a long way in terms of uh, quality of which we present the books uh, on the compendium. So this was a, you know, a chance to, quite frankly, take two of probably the two, two of the most important books uh, and you know, bring them up to current standards. Uh, so they're looking real fresh. That's available now. Uh, dig around in them. See what they look like now. Also available now, February perks. We've got uh, we've got some backdrops for you all. Um, those should be rolled out now to all subscribers. Um, so if you do not see them, or if you're having a weird issue or something like that, uh, just ping our just ping our help desk and uh, be kind to them. They're human beings, and uh, they work really hard for you. Uh, but if you're having any issues uh, with your subscriber perks, just reach out to them. They will take care of you. Coming up next on the roadmap, got a little bundle sale coming. Uh, bundle sale coming uh, next week. That's 20% off all of our bundles. The bundles are already a pretty cool discounted way to get uh, a lot of books. Uh, this is our only sort of bundle exclusive sale of the year. Again, 20% off. So uh, if you need a bundle, now is your time. Now is your time. This is your time to a stand up like Michael Keaton uh, in Batman Returns and then the bat signal like like shines to his living room. Do you remember that? And he's like, oh, it's time. And it's an awesome shot. But then you're like, has anyone not noticed that the bat signal is like programmed to shine in his living room? I think about that a lot. I also think about critical role subclasses a lot. Uh, our, uh, our own critical role subclasses as well as Blood Hunter errata updates are coming uh those are coming soon we'll actually have uh someone from that team from uh from our team on soon to to talk about those and talk through them uh a lot uh, a few questions along with that are all the subclasses from Taldora Reborn and Critical Roles really really lovely honestly new book uh coming to D&D Beyond they're not um Cobalt Soul uh, uh Oath of the Open Sea Paladin and Blood Hunter are sort of like um I don't know like uh, of official homebrew on uh, on D&D Beyond, it's really just you know, just a just a nice visualization of the uh, the love and partnership between us and Critical Role. But we want to make sure that those are uh, updated to uh, to the CR standards. So uh, those updates are coming, um, as well as some updates to our My Characters page. We've got a lot of feedback uh, from folks as to you know what the My Characters page should look like, how it should feel, what it should do. Uh, so I don't have a lot of specific details with you on the shape of that project right now, but please know that uh, it's being looked at, it's being worked on, and uh, some cool stuff's going to be coming down the line on that. Also got some accessibility changes coming up. Uh, I just want to give some some props to to uh, to Elliot and Faith's team and to Jared's team and to everybody behind the scenes that have been taking accessibility really seriously uh, at, at D&D Beyond. It is, uh, it's incredibly appreciated. So we, we've got a lot sort of on the docket. Uh, to that effect, but some two things that are in development right now are some screen reader improvements, as well as dyslexia font support, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Also, got some updates coming to our game data listing. So this is like um, when uh, when you're going up to, uh, to to rules and you're looking up uh, monsters, or you're looking up spells. Um, we are very aware that uh, the search function there. Uh, what is the what is like the the businessy corporate word uh, for for telling you that something's negative without really calling it negative it sort of sucks. It sort of sucks a little bit, right? Um, we're very aware of that. Uh, we're working hard to uh, we're working hard to fix it, and uh, some some really cool changes are, are coming on that front. I think you guys are going to be really satisfied. Um, I think it's really going to improve what uh, what we consider one of the core functions uh, of the website. And then. Finally, uh, just as you all get sick of hearing me ramble, uh, I find an opportunity to shut up. It's time to talk a little bit about the generic feature system with, uh, with our dear friend, Pat, one of our senior product managers uh, here at d and Beyond. Let's bring him up. Hey, Pat. Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you doing, man? Dude, I, uh, I'm good. I appreciate you being here. Thanks, dude. 
uh, it takes a lot these days to get here. Well, look, you, 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 when the lockdown started, you, you moved into that weird necromancer cave. We've been worried about you. As long as you're good. <laughs> some people, some people actually recognize this that are longtime dev update uh, viewers. This is Adam's old fat head that was behind his desk. Um, oh, way, is it really? Yeah. yeah. So I. Oh, so you I are you are in the empty in. office. I stole it out of his office and put it in this office. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, look, uh, uh, us folks at Fandom, us folks at D and D Beyond, no strangers to office looting culture. Okay, no strangers at all. You, you got to own it's it. Called, <laughs> it's called it's called reappropriation. That's, that's right. right. That's right. That's right. No, I mean, really, all you've done is just add something to your inventory. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's just how, yep, that's just yep. how life works. All right. Look, Perfect. hey, th these people don't like it when we talk to each other like humans. Let's uh, let's um, let's get right to business. Um, I would love since it's been a, a minute since we since we talked about it. Um, I would love to kick us off with kind of a general overview from you on what the generic feature system is, what folks can expect from it, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll open up to uh, to some questions. Does that work for you? Yeah, that that, that works. Um, so let me collect my thoughts here. Right click. So the generic feature system uh, is supposed to help us to be able to not only reference more things on the character sheet, um, but also to be able to track those things on the character sheet. Um, right now, you can reference most things and you can track most things, but not all mm -hmm. the things. And some of the things aren't even on the character sheet that could be on the character sheet. So what we're going to be doing. In, um, in software terms, is we're going to use uh, blessings from the Dungeon Master's Guide as our tracer bullet to uh, develop a system, which we're doing right now, actually, uh, develop a system that Faith and Elliot's team will literally go into a interface, type in blessings into a key place, and then now that that word blessings has a meaning in the database, and then they would type in, okay, blessing of health or blessing of health. Okay, so that works. And then the description, they would type that in. So they would type in into a key description, which then gives them the ability to. So what we're doing <laughs> without kind of stuttering over my own words here is we are giving all of the tools to create a database to the lore keeper team who are the folks that take all of the content that we get from wizards of the coast and put it into our system so once they've created this database um, then what we'll do is we'll point it to the right directions on the character sheet so then it populates uh, so the, the first example should be because this is an experiment to decide thing um, it should be that we go uh, blessings and then blessings appear in my actions or not my actions tab, but that, that whole uh, window down there where my actions and inventory and all that stuff is. It'll be a new mm -hmm. hill that'll say blessings. I click that blessings and then I can add a blessing or subtract the blessing. But if I add the blessing of health, as soon as I add it, uh, there'll be two parts. One is just the text telling you, hey, here's the reference. Um, and then the other will be the track saying, here's the reference. Oh, and by the way, we're actually going to add plus two to your constitution. No more than 22, because that's the rule is written. Um, mm -hmm. And it will happen automatically. So when that day comes, which I think is going to probably be within the next month or ish. So um, then it's open the floodgates, right? Because now we have the system that all the entries can be made. And all we have to do now is design a place for them to land and point it to the place to land. And of course, build the calculations. Some of the calculations are pretty complex. I think that's it in a nutshell, Joe. Do you have any questions like from, from your no, point that, of view or just listening to that? No, it definitely makes sense. What are, uh, let's say, let's say, let's pretend like today is launch day. Um, and uh, you you can give me the secret signal if you're like, 
dude, shut up. No. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, are, are there uh, like features that you're like, these are the ones that we're hoping are go on launch day? Yeah. I'm not um, holding you to anything. Again, folks, no, you know, no, anything can not. happen. And I think we're still, we're still trying to figure that out just a little bit. But see, so for us, there's going to be, there's a launch day after every sprint that we do. And our sprint cycles run about 11 days. Um, and we have a launch day. But our first launch day is going to be to Elliot and Faith and the Lorekeeper team. And they're going to be like, hey, I can now enter a key. Cool. I'm creating a database. Yay, we're creating a database. It doesn't do nothing. Uh, but data uh, then i think the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to experiment with what we call feature flags and uh, we'll hide all the things that we're building so that we can see that they're actually working and then once they're actually working um we'll talk with the community and make sure that we're not going to deliver um a product that's icky but maybe not completely done so uh, we'll find out what that happy medium is, and we could end up with something mm -hmm. like, hey, by the way, um, blessings, boons, um, uh, what's some other ones? Uh, packs, Our dark gifts. secrets are all in available for you to put on your character sheet, but none of the mathematics or calculations work at this point. And there's a little indicator saying it doesn't. But once it does, that indicator will drop off and it will auto-populate into your character sheet. So that may be a good way to go. It may also be a horrible way to go. We should wait until the calculation's in place before we release it. But for me, the character sheet's always been a reference and track. It, there's nothing worse than mm -hmm. go, looking at your character sheet, seeing that you need to know a thing, and then going to, like you said, the, the d d Beyond search. Or, or just Google searching something to figure out what the what the answer is. It should be on your character sheet, or at least pretty accessible from right. your character sheet. Yeah. Um, see, so yeah, I'm going through user questions, and there's a a lot of people asking the same thing, which I'm actually going to hold off on because I think it's it's sort of like a fringe addition to uh, to what we're talking about. Um, uh, but uh, Mick V2, um, who replaced Mick V1, I think, in a in a horrible Battle to the death. Um, so congratulations, Mick V2. Um, asks, will the generic feature system allow easier communications between systems on DDB? For example, showing character conditions um, in the combat tracker, etc. Yeah, so that's going to be a wholly different system, which is called, we're dubbing right now the new effects system. We don't think that's going to stick, but we hope it probably doesn't. Um, but I think what... Um, Mr. V2 saying is if I cast Bardic Inspiration um, to my friend, my friend either automatically gets it through the through the game log or the combat tracker, or at least has the opportunity to turn it on um, on their character sheet. So that's a different system because now we're putting like an overlay template over the all the data that's coming from the character sheet. So we have these uh, databases and then we have a game engine um, and then we have a character service. And these three things make the character sheet basically. Uh, and from there, we would then put an overlay that is a new effects system that gives you indicators that you have bardic inspiration or that you have your rage turned on or that you've been cast uh somebody cast less on you so you're not forgetting to roll those dice no it makes total sense total total sense well here's uh and this is a, a big jump but uh this is what a, a bunch of people are, are very curious about so i want to make sure that it gets asks um will the generic feature system uh interact with homebrew uh in any way Funny, you should ask. I always remember that. Hey. That's a comment from an old dead milkman song. Funny, you should ask. Um, yes. But anyway, so um, yes. Yes, 10 times over, yes. So one of the other experiments is once um, Elliot and Faith and team, um, Adam and Jay, 
get all the, the information in there, save for like blessings. We're trying, we want to give them uh, an indicator on their form that they created that says, make public, make home brewable, right? And then as soon as that happens and they click that and send it to, um, send it to, uh, out, out to the world, um, you go into the homebrew system and then you'd see all those old lists, that old list of homebrew stuff, but then you'd see a new one that says uh, blessings. And you'd be able to click blessings. And instead of going through the old homebrew system, that is, it's kind of, it's kind of uh, kind of hard uh, to do. Um, I, I mean, hostile, some people have said, uh, you would go into this new system that would be like, would you like to create a blessing? So it'd be like a, more like a wizard. Yeah, I want to create a blessing. Would you like to duplicate from one of these blessings? Yes, duplicate from the blessing of health. And I want to change the blessing of health from being a constitution plus two, no more than 22, to being a dexterity plus two, no more than 22. And I'm going to call it the blessing of stealth. And boom, now I've just created blessing of stealth homebrew. Uh, and it's, it's now available for me. Uh, and it'll be in that newer system that's less hostile than the old system. And maybe this question's already been asked, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. The goal then is to go back and take all the old stuff and push it through the same uh, generic feature system so that when you go to make a feat in Homebrew or you go to make a subclass in Homebrew, you're now in the new system once all that information's been pushed over into that, that new system. That's actually really awesome. Uh, uh, pretty cool. I've got you. I've got you for, yeah, no, it's, I mean, you know, a lot of work, but uh, pretty, pretty cool, honestly. Um, uh, I've got a couple minutes with you. Uh, before we leave Jarek Feature System, because that's sort of the focus of the video, right? Uh, is there any sort of like, you know, like FAQ kind of stuff, like, hey, here's here's like sort of the the, the too long didn't read that you sort of want people to know uh, about it. Any other additional information you want to make sure that like like users understand or can look forward to uh, anything I'm kind of missing. And then I have some container questions. Yeah, so I think the um, the answer, Joe, is uh, this is an experiment to create a thing that could potentially fix a lot or all the things and create new things. So when um, when Mr. Jeremy Crawford decides that the, your proficiency bonus is going to allow for your magic item to scale up, um, we'll be able to digest that much more rapidly than we currently can uh, because right. we can just build that into the, the database and then call the right math and then send it out in this layer versus having to dig up underneath the hood and get all inside there. Uh, right. But which, it's which again, I, yeah, but you know, and, and again, you know, I, I, I can't uh, reiterate enough how much of a, you know, a game changer for us, you know, that is, because again, like you said, when, when Jeremy has like a dope idea, uh, he doesn't, we, we don't get a phone call that day. You know, typically we find out about a lot of this stuff when we all look at the book for the very first time. Um, okay. So we got to so, build really rapidly. So I mean, all that to say, this is a, this is an experiment. Um, we're going to build blessings. Worst case scenario, we'll have blessings. Best case scenario, we could quite potentially have a game engine for RPGs. Um, that's the big dream. And uh, Jason, right now, if he's listening to this, is probably like, Pat, shut up. Don't say that. That's a long, long <laughs> way. Uh, but it's, that's what it is. It's the building blocks. It's the atomic and molecular building blocks to character data and monster data and uh, vehicle data and sidekick data and all that stuff. Uh, so. I love it, man. Dude, I, I appreciate you being on. I have one. Uh, I, got, I got a horse question for you. Um, if, if if you're good for it, you gotta go see a man about a uh, horse. I gotta go see a man about a horse. Um, Hadnerphone asks, uh, um, 
You know, I, I, I'm, I'm glad we're having a little, a little, little horse chat. I went to I have my senior prom was at the Kentucky Derby Museum. Um, uh, question: <laughs> How is the weight restriction for horses and mounts calculated? Um, they're uh, they're not specified in a table somewhere like with other containers. So are we using like a drag lift carrying capacity based on their strength scores? How strong is a horse, Pat? Dude, I don't even I, I don't even know the answer to that question. I should know the answer to that question. Um, I just remember Faith uh, pinging me two or three days ago, and she's like, "Hey, can we just make horses containers?" I'm like, "Go for it." So whatever <laughs> Faith did is what the the limitation is on it. I would have to experiment with it to see if it changes uh, depending on mm -hmm. on the strength of the horse or uh, what the capacity of a published capacity or not. I don't know the answer. Hey, look, I, I apologize for putting you on the spot just now. I, I think, <laughs> I think the, the big conclusion here is, is that horses are containers. That's pretty cool. And is there really a scientific way to even establish how strong horses are? I don't think there is. Well, that, um, there is the whole, I don't know. You ever heard the old adage about the, um, the Belgian uh, draft horses? Like it's crazy. No. Like, one it's so it's like this big teamwork thing um and one draft horse i think can pull like nine thousand pounds or twelve thousand pounds two draft horses can pull like twenty six thousand pounds which is more than each individually but if they were trained together they can pull even more and if they were raised together they can pull even more so it's 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 weird i'm gonna say this if if we ever send an email to Wizards of the Coast with just some thoughts on uh, implementing what you just described into how they determine strength scores for mounts, please CC me because I want to be a part of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exponential depending on how long they've lived yeah. together. Rules as written are. are great, guys, but you know we've got. <laughs> if you've never heard the Belgian um, dude, I appreciate you uh, so much for being on. Thanks so much, man. Um, uh, uh, I, I really, really do. The, the work you all do is fantastic. Um, and uh, hey, we'll see you all uh, next week on uh, on that their dev update. Thanks for being with us. Bye, guys.